Hello, wonderful people. I'm Tamara and this is my YouTube channel. And I want to thank you for allowing me to be on this journey with you because I enjoy studying borderline personality disorder and narcissistic personality disorder. Doesn't mean that I'm the expert of everything. I don't know how they feel internally. I can only draw conclusions from what I'm learning. And so your comments and your feedback help me to grow and help me to learn. So we're all, we're, we all, you know, have different areas of knowledge, but the point for me is I want these, I want these people healed, you know, and if I can make tiny contributions in that way, then, then that's what I want to do because no one deserves to have a personality disorder, not even narcissists. I mean, I have compassion for them too. Um, so, so yeah, so this is kind of one of those videos where I'm, I've been on to this for a while, but I just want to put it into words. We're going to talk about external happiness to me with these two personality disorders. That is the key. And I will explain that as we go. Okay. So when I looked up, what is external happiness? The California State University says we have both external and internal roots to happiness. External roots to happiness include any actions that utilize our external environment to contribute to our happiness. In a typical day, we take many actions like eating breakfast, talking with family members, working, playing golf, or going to bed. So those are actually actions that we take. So when you think of external, you think, I think outside of the self. When I think of internal, I think of inside of the self. The internal with these personality disorders has some, some deficits, has some skeletal makeup issues that function differently, think differently, are driven by impulses, defense mechanisms, all of that. It's intricately wound. Why? Because these people at a very young age had to learn how to defend themselves. It's really the body and the mind's way of giving them some protection. Some of these people have been severely abused, neglected, all of that. Okay. So it's really, Hey, you know what? If somebody is molest, well, let me not say if they're the M word or they're being, yeah, then you want a monster to come out of that kid, right? You want them to learn how to defend themselves so that that doesn't keep, keep repeating itself all of the time. So you got this internal wiring that's built to protect. Same thing with narcissists. Narcissists, a lot of times they were put in adult roles before they were ready. They were, so they had to be bigger than what they were or they were spoiled rotten to the point where they weren't taught boundaries and strategies and cope ways of no, normal coping mechanisms. So you got people that were abused, not all of them. Some of them, it was hereditary. Many of them, there was some abuse happening, right? So the internal wiring is, is off for a reason. It is to protect them but it causes problems relationally with the outside world because their internal mechanisms aren't made that way. And their these disorders, internal mechanisms also drive them bonkers. They don't like the way that it feels to feel the way that they feel many times. Right. And so external, is the key and a lot of that comes from a acting out which we want to channel the act the acting out into more positive ways like volunteering at a at a uh can, what do you call the canned food pan you know pantry where they can feed homeless people put that energy there 
put that energy into um and into places that are that need that type of energy and not with reckless driving um reckless shopping or interacting with the opposite sex in a ways that are not good that could be damaging you know we want to we want to channel that energy externally into positive ways and that's why i said external is the key you've got to find and that takes training so when i did my high functioning borderline video check that out i'm talking greatly about people who use a lot of the external to make their way through life so they're not just just doing all of the acting out behaviors that are prescribed in the dsm right they're actually doing productive things for some narcissists and borderlines that comes very easily and they make great contributions to society there are going to be people who that's going to be more of a challenge that that's going to take work that's going to take training so i'm not telling you that training yourself to delve into projects delve into scrapbooking gardening baking making things um, putting care packages together for the military or the homeless, you know, those things, they might find themselves wanting to act out. Like I can't, I can't push through all those things, but whether you have borderline or narcissism or not, we all have to train ourselves to build stamina in certain areas to become better at them. Learning how to use your iPhone at first was super frustrating, right? Or your iPad or your computer. It's irritating learning new systems, right? So you have to keep working at it, you know? Keep practicing. Do five minutes. Come back tomorrow. Do five, you know, you're retraining yourself, right? Okay? And so external is key. If you... Are, are miserable you're gonna have to channel some of that internal into external you're gonna have to change the subject find new passions um keep find things that are gonna keep you going okay when i used to you know when i first started out working with people i'm a counselor right and I've worked with different organizations and in different capacities. And the push used to be internal. We want kids, we want kids, for example, to have internal motivations for doing the right thing. You do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. You're building a conscience for other people. We don't steal from them because it, it's hurtful. We say, you know, we do things internally, but what I'm learning as we go in society, if you, if you have a, a child that is not understanding things internally, people used to argue, we don't want extrinsic. You shouldn't have to give somebody a candy bar to make them do the right thing. My answer to that is give them the candy bar, give them the sticker give them the the praise the you know because you executed something in a positive way you know find that thing um give them a pencil or a treat we have to motivate extrinsically in order for people for children for people with personality disorders they're we have to we have to teach externally for them to build up the internal that's just my opinion people might argue with that but how are you supposed to learn internal if there's not external i think if you haven't had abuse or you have loving parents that are right there with you that are taking the time the energy the they're they're meeting you at your age and they're working with you 
then you are going to naturally develop the internal. Parents are the key to a lot of our internal happiness that we develop. They are. You know, is that baby's needs being met? Or are they allowed to scream and cry for hours? You know, most parents are, what, you know, what's wrong? Let me hold you. Let me comfort you. Do you need your diaper changed? Are you in pain? Is something sticking you? Are you hungry? What do you, they're meeting those needs. And you you can't, you got to do that, right? That helps someone to, to develop internal conscientiousness for other people. Oh, you're hurting. Let me comfort you. A borderline and a narcissist, a borderline is going to be more compassionate. Narcissist isn't, but they also have to practice developing empathy. And it starts with external. So let me know what you think about external motivators and also developing um, projects and hobbies that are external to build up, to get to the internal place of peace and happiness and fulfillment and calmness that you're trying to get to. Because for me, it's just energy that's floating around that needs to be channeled. So if we can use the external to channel some of that energy in positive ways, why the heck wouldn't we do that? So let me know what you think. Check out my two books. I have learned a lot about narcissism, so check out my book. They can be very complicated to deal with. I wrote a book about that. And then if your romantic life is in shambles, I'm going to give you areas to work on with that as well from my perspective in my book, Flip the Script on Love. So check out both of those books. They are meant to help. I never thought I would write a book. It was so difficult. I say I will never do it again. So take advantage of the fact that there are some books that will help you. So they're on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description box and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye, wonderful people. And keep striving. You can do it. Bye.